Hey everyone, it's Daniel, your host of the Mirror Sphere. Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1 Review, with spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, you haven't seen this episode, you can take off now. Um, I will tell you when I really start spoiling stuff. Um, I want to make a quick apology to Jake D. Uh, he's a big follower of my sh channel. Yesterday I was going to put it on my email on the channel so that he can contact me so we can do a review of this together. Fortunately, once I got home last night, I realized I forgot it was my daughter's birthday party. Uh, we we're celebrating, it's not her birthday today, but it was a birthday party. And so I got super busy and I had no time to get on even on the computer last night. So apologize to him, Jake D. Sorry, man. I'll make sure I get my email up there tonight, and then we can hook up sometime to do another uh, review of maybe episode two or something uh, next week. Uh, Nat, um, what did I think about this episode? I liked it. I know a lot of the Phantom Menace guys are not very happy with this, but they didn't really... Was it the greatest episode ever? No. Um, was it horrible? Not really. It was mediocre. And it was decent. Um, yeah. You know, it starts off with him going into a fight club looking for this contact to help him find his people. And the guy ends up being a guy who hunts down Mandalorian for their Beska armor. And so he ends up killing most of the men. They all, like, this whole arena attacks him pretty much. He um, ends up winning. You know, of course. <laughs> She just excuse me. Um, they have a cute little scene where Baby Yoda's sitting in his little chair, and he goes, you know, he goes that little and his little um, what do you call those things? Seekers, I think. And they like pop it to his wrist. Baby Yoda knows it. He goes over, hits his button, and the shield closes. So it's like kind of cute because Baby Yoda knows so shit's about to go down. And then you have this cool scene where you know he gets like hit. In the Baskar, and a guy smacks him across it, punches him, and he's just like, ding! Like, really? Bitch! <laughs> Your big battle scene, he pretty much kicks everybody's ass. He's not really afraid of anything now because his Baskar armor is complete. And it actually is protecting most of him. And so, he, you know, beats all the dudes up, kills their, most of the people, goes, gets the main guy, this little, like, Cyclops looking alien. He gets him to admit that he was he was trying to steal his armor and that he only knows of one man who wears Mandalorian armor on Tatooine. And he lives in this remote part of Tatooine. So, you know, he's got him, like, hanged upside down. And the guy's like, "Only I will tell you only if you don't kill me. And he's like, ah, oh, you will not die by my hands. Which is, like, a straight-up tell. Like, hey, I'm not going to kill you, but someone else is going to. And so... He starts to walk away, and the guy's like, let me down! He's like, no, and he shoots the light, which I don't know what world they're on, but the light goes out, and all these red eyes appear. I'm guessing the darkness, in the darkness, there's like monsters. They won't come into the light. So when the light goes out over, the monsters start coming in, and he starts screaming, and yeah. So he leaves, he, you see him go, hey, the Tatooine. The music on the way to Tatooine is a little off. I'll admit that. It didn't, I don't know, it just uh, it wasn't, you know, Star wars -y. Anyways, he gets a tattoo, he meets the mechanic chick from the first season. You know, she's like, hey, the Baby Yoda. She loves Baby Yoda. So she's like holding on to Baby Yoda, telling him and all this stuff. You could, She could tell that there's a difference between what he was before, because he hated robots before. Now he was, you know, kind of letting him go, you know, freely go and help him out. Um, she shows him on an old map before the war of Tatooine where this um, place was. This remote village. She said it was destroyed by bandits right after the war ended. So he's probably going to find nothing there. So he gets on his bike, the bike that he left there before, takes off. And you get a little scene where he like shows up at night and he's doing his hand signals with the... Um, Tuscan Raiders and the Sand People, as we should say. And you see that he's growing more and more um, fond of the Sand People, but he's growing more of a bond with their 
you know, their way of life, which will help him later um, in the episode. Uh, he go, he finally finds the dude, and the dude's called the Marshal, and Marshal walks in full, you know, Mandalorian armor. It's Boba Fett's armor. And he realizes, he's, you know, he sits down and goes, let's have a drink, man. The guy, Mando's like, okay. And he sits down, he takes off his helmet and puts it down. As soon as he does that, Mando realizes immediately, this guy is not a Mandalorian and he's wearing Baskar armor. And he tells him to remove it. He gets, you know, because you have to earn that armor. Uh, the guy says, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that because, you know, blah, blah, blah. He needs it to protect the city. So, in the end, um... Not in the end, but they almost draw each other. They're about like this big standoff where they're like about to shoot each other. And then the rooms are shaking and they, they're like, what the fuck? And, you know, the marshal doesn't really act surprised. All the people are running into their houses. To, I thought it was going to be like a big sand crawler, you know, the freaking or something else that was going to appear. Like maybe raiders were coming in with like a big vehicle. No, it turns out to be uh, what they call it, a sand drake. It's like a big worm dragon thing. And it burrows under the, the sand, comes up, eats one of their um, cattle thing, and then goes back into the, I can't remember what those things are called. They're a sand people's like mammoth looking thingies. It, I can't remember what they're called right now. It, grab, it eats it, goes back to the ground, and he goes, you know what? Let's make a deal. And so he goes and sits down. He says, hey, we have a problem. You have a problem. I have a problem because I need this armor. But I also have a problem because that giant fucking Drake out there is destroying our, you know, slowly destroying our village. It's only a matter of time until it eats more people or destroys, you know, something. Um, so... Mando agrees that if he turns over the armor, he'll help him kill the sand drake. And the guy agrees. He says, you know what? Okay. That's fair. You know what? I'll give you the armor for your service in destroying the drake, the, the creature. And he's like, well, how are we going to hunt it down? And he says, oh, don't worry. I know where it lives. Because he says that he'll drive his, fly his ship over, you know, bait it, bait it out. It'll come out and he'll shoot it with his ship and kill it. But unfortunately, this, this sand drake um, can feel the vibrations of the ship in the air, and so it won't come out. It'll stay underground. But he knows where it lives. So they start going headed there, and they run into some um, big dog creatures come out, and he's getting ready to shoot them, and Mando steps forward and starts speaking uh, sand language. This is where I have kind of a problem. Uh, the sand people have their own like grunts and rrr, and, yarr, and that's how they speak. And Mando doing it, uh, I don't know. I agree with a lot of people. It's kind of like, when did he learn how to speak their language? I know he knew their sand, their sign language, because they understood sign language. And that's how, in the first scene, he talked to them. He used sign language to speak to them. Um, uh, but other than that. Um, so him starting to speak and grunt their language is kind of off-putting. I was like, oh, well, um, okay. And so, but he agrees that, you know, they won't fight. They'll, they'll kill the drake together. And they go up to go see what the drake is. And they pull this one dude goes down there. One of the sand people goes down there with one of the bison things. And they're going to leave. And he starts running away because, you know, he shouted for the drake to come out and eat the bison. Instead, it comes out and eats the dude. And just leaves the fucking bison thing there. And I was like, damn! <laughs> this thing looks... I, I will say this. This creature looks fucking cool. It comes out. It looks like a dragon. Mixed with like a giant fucking worm. And you don't see a whole body. You just see like its neck up. And it's massive. This thing is fucking huge. And they even say that. He's like, I didn't think it was this fucking big. I've only seen it come out a little bit and eat stuff. But I've never seen its full size. And he's like, yeah, this thing's fucking huge. We're going to have to make a better plan because there's not enough of us here to do anything. So the sand people agree that if they both bring their village... Excuse me, what the hell, man? Oh, fucking early in the morning here. Anyways, um, if they agree to bring 
you know, his people and their people, they'll fight together. It'll be a whole lot of them. Um, so they agree. He goes back, convinces the town. He's got to convince the town to fight with the Sand People. And the Sand People are known on Tatooine as raiders and killers and monsters, blah, blah, blah. But they're finally able to come together in agreement. Um, the villagers load up a bunch of explosive devices onto these bison. And they head to the thing with the sand people. There's a couple incidents where, like, one one of the sand people actually dropped one of the bombs. And one of the villagers, like, loses it on him. Like, are you kidding me? You're trying to kill us all? He's like... And then the... the what's I can't remember his name. But the guy who's not the real Mandalorian runs up and goes, Hey, I got... And the, oh, the... What do they call him? The, um, I can't remember what to think right now. Anyways, he, he breaks it up. They finally get there. They set up all these little archery things. This is kind of weird. Like these massive crossbows. And they have to dig. So they dig out the ground. Put a bunch of explosives underneath. And the plan is to have it come out far enough that it lays across the explosives. The fight, you know. And then it'll explode. Because the underbelly is the weak spot. And so they have problems of getting it out because at first they get it kind of out it eats a dude and then it kind of starts to go in the back end they finally are able to piss it off enough with the help of the village throwing like fucking hand grenades shit at it they come out fully so it fully comes out finally gets over this spot they blow it up doesn't kill it just really fucking pisses it off so now it's diving and coming up all over the fucking place and just killing people and Mendo and him decide to start fighting it. And they're both... This is where I th I kind of thought that, he, that Mando would allow the guy to keep the armor because he kind of knows how to use it. Like, he knows how to use the jetpack. He knows how to use the missile. He can fly around. And I figured, you know... What I was thinking during the show was Mando's going to like this guy and he's going to take this guy in as, as a crew member or say that he's earned the right and that he's earned his respect and maybe he deserve, he's earned the right to wear the armor. Because if you don't know, Mandalorian isn't a race. It's a kind of a creed. And through honorable deeds, you earn your armor. And so that's what I thought. In the end, it doesn't. He gives back the armor. But uh, so they're fighting. They're losing pretty bad. And nothing is piercing it. Their weapons aren't doing anything. Mando sees that one of the bison is just loaded with fucking explosives. It's still there. So he, he tells him, hey, you know, the marshal. That's, that's the guy. He tells the marshal to uh, get the thing's attention. So he fires, like, this missile at it. And his back missile hits it, blows up. The thing gets, like, fucking pissed. Looks at him, starts coming towards him. Mando tells him, you know, don't worry. I think I got this. Just take care of the kid. He smacks the guy's jet, which... Fucking makes him go flying. Um, the Mando then grabs a hold of the bison because the bison starts trying to get away. Grabs a hold of the bison. The, the Drake eats them both. And then you got like a couple minutes, like a couple seconds, of, of susp you know, s suspended. Like everybody's like wondering what's going on because the ground just stops moving. And they're like, whoa, what's going on? And then slowly it starts moving and then it bursts forth. The thing bursts forth and it's got like lightning shooting out of its mouth. And, the man that used his rifle, if you don't know this, in the first season, the rifle has, like, this little, like, shocking ability in it. And he just, he kept shocking the fucking creature until it let him go. As soon as it lets him go, he, he hits the device and explodes. So the bison is full of explosive. It's now inside the stomach of the creature. Explodes, killing it. Just, it fucking falls and it dies. Uh, the marshal... Thanks him for his for his help. Hands him the Besker armor that you know Boba Fett's Besker armor. Says you know thanks for what you did. And Mando gets a child and they start to leave. The baby Yoda isn't uh, or the other child I should say doesn't have a lot to do in this episode. Most of his stuff in this episode is look at me I'm cute and I do cute things like he hides in a jar he does his thing and he hides in his bag you know it's kind of like this cute little. Just, you know, oh, look at me, look at baby, oh, he's so cute. But mostly it's about the Mando and this other guy fighting this drake. And they they win. He gets the armor. He starts heading out. 
Then you get the guy. This is the this is like the kind of like the spoiler thing. The guy's there's a guy standing on a ridge and like a robe looking thing, and he turns. He's got like wear weapons on his back. And he turns around and it's Boba Fett. It's one. Of the, he's got the clone face, and he turns and he starts walking away. And he, as he sees Mando driving off, and my guess is in the next episode, Boba Fett and Mando are going to meet. Boba Fett's going to want his armor back. Either Mando's going to give it to him or he's not. Um, will he tell him about the Jedi? I don't know exactly. But we will get a little more information from the next episode, I believe. Was this episode uh, fantastic? No, it had its issues. Less on the music. It was kind of off. Um, it just... For the first episode was another season. You kind of want to have it more. Uh, you really want a fire in it, so that people are really interested in watching the show. And it just doesn't hit that level for me. It hits just below. It's good. It's decent Star Wars. It's the best Star Wars that Disney has ever done. Everything else is shit. But Mandalorian is the only thing that is decently Star Wars that Disney has ever produced. And this is one of the more mediocre episodes. Uh, there's a, In the first season, they have lots of them. They have a couple really great episodes, but a lot of them were just like, eh. They're not horrible, but they're not like fantastic. I don't think this is the worst episode ever. A lot of people are calling it the worst episode of Mandalorian they've ever seen. And I'm like, nah... I wouldn't say that. I think some of the scenes were really good shot. I think the the Drake coming out of the sand was really awesome. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it was still, it was it was decent. I would give it a rating. I would give it a 6 out of 10. It's not the best, but it's not horrible. So it's about 5 to 6 out of 10. And... I would watch it again. I probably will. I'll probably watch it again later when I eat my lunch or something before I do my Star Trek team stream. Uh, but you look forward to that later. Um, I do plan on doing it probably around 2 p.m. If Wes and those guys can hang in. <coughs> if they can't, I'll let you know. Um, if I have to reschedule again, I will. I had to do that last week because Wes just got too busy. And Fast even Seagal... He, he couldn't do it. Yeah, technical issues. So hopefully this week we'll be able to do it with you guys. If not, I'll let you know. I'm sorry about the lighting in here. The sun is out today. It is not. It's been cold as it's been the last couple weeks. So the sun's kind of just right here. And yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I just want to thank you all for coming. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. If you like to hear me talk and my my opinion on things, don't forget this is our own opinions, not official, you know, whatever. Um, you can argue with me in the comments all you like. I would love to argue. I wanted to actually do a live stream with some people about this, but unfortunately I, I didn't get to watch it until this morning, and everybody else was already doing their live streams this morning. So, um, yeah. If I do, if I can find someone later that does their lives, you know, I'll get on with them and do that. It'll be kind of cool. Anyways, thank you. Thank you for being great. Thank you for all your support. I want to keep building this channel, so if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And share this with your friends, your families, whoever else has, you know, whatever. And help me hit 200. And then 300 and 500 and 1,000. But anyways, thank you all. Please, stay safe. <laughs> stay healthy. Be good to each other. And I'll see you next time in the Mirror Sphere.